Well, hey there. Thanks for joining in. Well, today, we're gonna learn how to string a tennis racket. But before I do that, I wanna tell you about my equipment. This is a Prince Neos 1000. Had it over 10 years, moved it around a lot, and it keeps on stringing. Initially, it came with a crank tension head. However, I replaced it with a Wise 2086 electronic tension head. Maybe the best one on the market. It strings the rackets much more accurately, and the more you use it, the faster you get with it. Awesome. Well, anyway, let's get started, and I will see you soon. All right, I'm gonna do a quick rundown on what these buttons are on the Wise 2086. As you can see, the first one is a constant pull, which then keeps the tension pulling while it gets to your preferred weight. Uh, next is a speed of how fast you want this head to pull the string. There's three different speeds. One, two, th three, two, one. Uh, next there's sound. There's two different sounds. Uh, testing, just retest is the calibration of the head to make sure there's no errors. Uh, now you have two options that you can pull. You can either do it in kilos or in pounds. I prefer pounds. Uh, this is the up and down button to uh, set your tension as well as the speed. And next is your presets for your strings. You can do M1 if you have a preset 45 or M2 if you have a preset 50. Now you just switch this, push the up and down button to change the tension. And hold it down to until you hear two beeps and it will save your preset. Uh, second is your pause button which then just moves ahead. If you want to change it back, if you want to reset it, just push it back there. Next is your pre-stretch. You pre-stretch it, you can go hold it down, you can pre-stretch it up as much as 25%, as low as 10%. And that is pretty much the functionality of this WISE 2086. Now most people will give you a racket and they would know what tension to string it at. However, if they don't, in the past, most rackets would have information about the recommended tension, weight, string pattern. However, nowadays, the new rackets they don't put it in anymore. It must be cost saving. So you would have to go online, search up the model, and find out the info about the racket. That's pretty much it. All right, now I'm gonna teach you how to put the racket onto the string machine. Now every racket is a little bit different size head, so you'll need to be able to adjust it with this arm on your machine that goes up and down. You're gonna make sure that you put the racket snug against these pegs, okay? Once it's snug and it can't move anymore, the arm, then you can lock it into place. Bam. Now the arm doesn't move, okay? Now you have these two snap-ons that holds the racket so it doesn't flop around. The larger one you want to put towards the throat of the racket, insert into the hole here, and the smaller one Put it towards the head of the racket and push it in. Now, see how the racket doesn't move? Now you can use the, the tool and clip it into place. And on this side, there's another one. Make sure it's lined up and clip it into place. All right, now the racket is securely on the stringing machine. Can't move it whatsoever. All right, there it is. All right. Now that we're ready to string, I've set my string tension. Uh, make sure that the clamps are all pointed directions for the mains, which is up and down. Uh, this Yonix V-Core 97 is a 16 by 20 string pattern. So I'm gonna pull the strings eight times the length of this racket. That will make it uh, 16, all right? There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and another half for extra uh, length just in case, especially since you have to pull it. And that's it. Get my cutter. Remember to cut at a diagonal angle. All right, so you gotta make sure you know which way to start the strings from, because if you don't do it, you're gonna have to restart, and that sucks. So for this racket, I'm gonna have to start from the top to the bottom. As you can see, there's like these little bumps and the bumps, the strings have to go over the bumps. That's another good indicator, okay? Let's start stringing. 
So make sure that's even, the strings are even, and you start pulling. Okay. What you're gonna do is you're gonna get your starter clamp. You're gonna clamp the top because that's where you're gonna be pulling the other string so that this string doesn't get pulled with it. Um, I'm gonna use my clamp as well. So it really holds it in there. Boom. And we are set. So now let's start pulling. So you hear the two beeps. Clamp the, so the bottom where it's being pulled. Now I like to do maybe three strings and then move on to the other side and maybe do another three, kind of to keep it even so it doesn't uh, warp the racket. So same, same side. Same clamp, clamp it up there where it's being pulled. Third string. Flip it to the other side and even it out. Now this one, you're gonna just pull it even though it's being clamped. Because you need to clamp it down here, right? All right, cool. So now you can unclamp it, slide it down. You don't need the starter clamp anymore. And now we've got tension, all right? Once again, do another three. And I'm gonna be fast forwarding some of this because it's gonna be repetitive. So I don't want you to get bored. One of the things that you have to do, I'll explain later, is knowing which string or which grommet to skip. It's usually the last one. You'll see what I mean. That's three there, move back to the other one. Mains are pretty easy. Might be the easiest part. See how I like to just kind of alternate sides just to keep the tension even on the racket. Skip a, sh a grommet. You see what I mean? All right. So we're at 
think uh, 14, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it'd be seven on this side and then it should be seven on this side. I'm just starting from the middle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 14. So that means that these are the last two, which is very important. All rackets, you usually have to skip one grommet and move over, okay? It's just um, the way that the rackets kind of built that way sometimes. Now let's see if this one, this one looks like there is no skip, just to let you know, just because of this racket. But you gotta pay attention. You, you can look online and you can look at the specs of your racket and you gotta see, okay, is there a grommet you need to skip? Because it's very important. If you don't do it right, your, your string job is done and you gotta start over again, okay? So this one you don't. And I barely got enough string. Play still good. Ooh, barely. I didn't pull enough, but it worked. But it worked. Sometimes you just have to make sure it's tight. Saved. We're good to go. We have enough string to tie the knot. Now, um, in this racket, there's going to say mains and crosses on the frame. Some rackets do, some rackets don't. That just tells you that the grommets are going to be used for a main and a cross. Okay, so you'll see what I mean. Okay, next, um, I'm going to tie this up. Now, you're going to have to find a grommet that has one of these fat grommets here. Okay, so you can see some are too thin. There's no way you can put another string in there, but some grommets are fat. That's meant to put another string in so that you can tie your knots or you can, so that you can also put it for your crosses. All right, so what I'll do is I will use this grommet here, pull it through. Now I'm gonna tie the knot. Now basically what it is is you go down See, there's a loop here. Go back up, go through the loop, and now you've got your knot here, okay? Um, I like to use my long nose plier and just kind of pull. See, as you can see, the knot now is tight, okay? You can also do, some people, I mean, I'll do it sometimes. I'll, I'll use the machine, and there's this pause button, and that's what I would think. And see how the machine can help you pull the knot a little tighter. Okay, now you want to make two knots, very important. Um, and bam. So that way, this tension will stay tight. Okay, so that's one. Second knot, okay, same, same grommet as the other one. It's just on the opposite side, okay? So you're gonna, I'm gonna go through there, go down and up as you can see, it's, it's the same string. Okay, get my long nose plier. Help me pull. Pull it, bam. Okay, might as well just use the machine as well since I did it for the other one. And have the machine help me make sure the knot's a little tight. All right, cool. There it is, tight knot. Second, second knot. Not too worried about it being like as tight as the first one, but it should be tight still. And I pull it hand tight, and you're done with the mains. Now get your get your cutter, cut the excess string off. Voila, mains are done. Now unclamp, and now get ready to set up for the cross uh, the, the crosses, which now I have to change my clamps. I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna change it towards the main crosses as you can see. Okay. So and now it's ready for crosses as you can see. Alright. Let's go let's go pull crosses now. Alright, so now let's start our mains and make sure you're going in 
from either the top or bottom. I like to come in from the top, uh, starting from the top and work my way down. So put it through one of the fat grommets here and you're gonna go up and down. Make sure you're weaving through up and down or you're gonna have to start over if you miss a, uh, a weave. All right, and I'm gonna put it into the same fat one that's on this other side. It's a little snug. And I'm gonna leave some extra string here so I can tie my knot, okay? Now I'm gonna start stringing down all the way till I get to the third string because that's where I'm gonna to have to tie this knot on one of the crosses that was coming through. Okay, so this long side, this long string is what I'm gonna start working with from now on. Okay, so make sure it's opposite from the top string, up and down. Here we go, here we go. Boom, boom, boom. Next grommets. Same one, push through. And now make sure you're, whenever you're pulling, you're using your other hand to slide the string up and down so that you don't wear the string out. Now some, most rackets have an extra, extra grommet that you can just tie the knot right away. This one, not so much, especially since I'm doing two strings. So that's why I need the cross string up and available so I can tie the, the knot. All right, so weave up and down. And it gets a little tangly at times, okay? So now that I have three strings ready, okay, my top three. Now I'm gonna make sure to, I'm gonna insert my knot string into the same area as the same cross here, okay? Pull a little bit, all right, and I'm gonna do my knot on the, onto this string, okay? So, as I am tightening, as I'm pulling it, it'll pull these three strings, um, this knot will get tighter, okay? So what I like to do too, is maybe even bump up my tension just for these three strings, because I'm pulling three strings. So I might even bump up the tension a couple pounds just so that I can get um, a little bit more pull. Maybe I'll bump it up a pound. And here, and along those wires, just kind of like a hole. There it is. Okay, so now I'll get my clamp, clamp the okay. side, boom. And now we're good to go. So, as you can see. This knot's nice and snug. Now I'm gonna clamp, do my second knot. And pull it in tight, boom. There it is. All right, so let's begin. And like I said, I'm gonna fast forward this because this is gonna be pretty repetitive. Um, I'm just gonna go and I'll come back, start speaking again when it's uh, towards the last string at the bottom because then I'll show you how that how it finishes and tie the knot and that's it. So make sure it's every other. And now from here, if you want, you can start pulling. Oh, I'm gonna change back my tension back down a little, back down to what I had it. And now I want to touch. Now you pretty much can use the same clamp. All right, clamp, boom. And now we're just gonna fly right through it. Boom, boom. And you know, work your 
fingers up and down. Thank you. 
All right, here we are on the last string, the 20th string. Now I'm gonna pull it back, pull it through the same big fat grommet, work my way through, get to the other end, and then I'm gonna tie the knot, okay? This one, the knot's gonna be on one of the crosses as well. As well. And I'm gonna show you, it's gonna be kind of snug when you do, use your long nose pipe. If you can't get it through, just use your long nose pipe to help you pull it through, okay? Pull. String tight. Make sure you clamp it. Okay, and now I'm gonna put this in one of these fat grom, fatter grom, not as fat as the other ones, but I'm gonna use my long nose plier to help me push it through because it is pretty snug. So as you can see, I got it through, pull it out, make your knot. Okay. use a machine to kind of get that knot a little tighter. All right, great. Do my second knot. Then I'm gonna go the other way. So that way the knot looks nicer. Sometimes I forget which way I have it in. So let's go in this way and then pull it through. Hand tight, so in second knot, and voila, we're done. Now get your cutter, oh, uncap it so that way not all the tension is tight. Cutter, cut the extra string off, cut the string over here as well. Boom, boom, unclamp, take it all off, bam, bam. Beautiful. Well, I hope this has been informative for you. If you have any questions, please comment below. I will answer them. And if you really like this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for your support, and I'll see you on the next video.